Omar Figueroa. Does he still have it? We answer that question next. Please like and subscribe. Help us hit 10,000 subscribers. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another episode of Friday Check Hook. I uh, wanted to get right into it. Omar Figueroa uh, of Westlaco, Texas. The Valley area will be back. Uh, he hasn't fought in a very long time. Uh, we're going to spend the episode discussing his future. Uh, Pantarita or Pantera was uh, one of the best fighters in the world when he went MIA. Um, he's fought, he hasn't fought since July of 2017, so that's about a year and a half ago. Uh, in that fight, he destroyed uh, Robert the Ghost Guerrero. Uh, knocked him down six times, I believe. Um, seven times. Seven times. Knocked Guerrero down seven times in that fight. Uh, and to, on his way to a third round stop. Now, keep that in mind. Robert the Ghost Guerrero has been in the ring with everyone. Floyd Mayweather, Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia, he's uh, Andre Berto. He's never been stopped. Figueroa stopped him in, in three rounds, absolutely destroyed him. Now, this comes from a, a former lightweight champion of the world, Omar Figueroa. Uh, and, and now, he hasn't fought since. And even before the Guerrero fight, he took a year and a half off before that fight. So, going back to the end of 2015, that's three years plus. You know, 38 months, let's call it. He's fought one time. He's fought one time. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm going to be fair. I'm a big, big fan of Omar Figueroa. I know he's had personal demons. No one's been able to, to, you know, touch him in the ring. But outside the ring, he's had personal demons. And, and I'm, I'm going to be consistent here. I, I've given Keith Thurman a lot of crap. Given him a lot of crap uh, for, for the inactivity, um, the fake injuries. I, I have to also put that on Omar Figueroa. Well, that's a fight I would love to see. Could you imagine uh, what Figueroa would do to uh, Keith Thurman? Uh, he, uh, you saw what, uh, what's his name? Jose Cesar Lopez did to, to, to Keithy Poo. Could you imagine what Guerrero could do to him if he got his hands on him? Uh, we forget how good Robert the Ghost Guerrero was. Um, but, you know, wasted talent is wasted talent. And, and so far, he's wasted a lot of his talent, unfortunately. You know, again... You guys know I support my Texas fighters. He's a Texas fighter. He wears it on his sleeve, as does his brother Brandon, who I'm a big fan of. And check out 3D Boxing Block, 3D Boxing Block .com. Uh, Brandon Figueroa was listed as our number one prospect who could win a world title in 2019. Uh, so you know I love these guys, but I have to call it as I see it, and I'm I'm Omar's biggest fan. Uh, I hope he comes back. I hope he gets his personal demons under control. Um, and he knocks those demons out. Uh, I hope he comes to Christ. Uh, I hope he finds that in his life. Um, and, I, and I wish the guy the best. Uh, this fight with John Molina is going to be excellent. Um, but we need to see him. We need to see him stay active. When, when he came back in 2017, he fought Guerrero. He said he was going to be active again. It's been a year and a half he haven't fought. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's one of those things. Um... He had a fight against Adrian Broner scheduled uh, for 20... Well, for when Broner fought Jesse Vargas. That fight obviously never happened. Uh, Figueroa got a DWI, ended up in jail, uh, you know, arrested, and hasn't fought since. It's been a... a a ro you know, it's been a roller coaster. It's been a, a series of unfortunate events for, for Figueroa. Can we keep in mind how talented this guy is? Um, uh, and I want to get into this fight. We'll, we'll start there. We'll, we'll get into the, the John Molina Jr. fight. Uh, this is going to be... Uh, this fight is tailor-made for both fighters. This is going to be an all-action war. Um, and Omar Figueroa says he should win it within six rounds. I, I think that's about right. I, I'm, my official prediction is going to be Figueroa like right? Fifth round knockout, but this is going to be all action. This is going to be exciting. Uh, let's see. Let's see if there's ring rust. I mean, the guys fought once in over three years. There should be ring ring rust. Let's see what that looks like. Um, again, when Figueroa is, is is right and he's going, he's one of my favorite fighters. Uh, this is going to be what, what Molina, This is going to be a brutal war. Um, it's what Molina likes. It's what Guerrero likes, and it's not going to end well for 
uh, Molina, I don't think. But the fans will get their, their, their money's worth. Uh, this is on the, on the card of Leo Santa Cruz fighting a nobody. Uh, it was supposed to be Flores, uh, who, who dropped out uh, because of a foot injury or an ankle injury, something like that. But Guerrero's the story here, and, and, and I, and I want to take you back, because he's still, he, he just turned 29, but he is 29. So, it's one of those things, like, he's, his time is now. We go back, he won his, an interim world title in, a WBC interim lightweight title back in 2013, six, almost six years ago, he was 23, um, came out on fire and beat Nihito Ako, Akawara, I'm sorry, probably saying that wrong. And if you remember before that, he iced Abner Koto in one round before that to get that title shot. That was from the interim title. Then he fought a guy named Jerry Belmontes, and it was upgraded uh, to a world title. Uh, and he defended it one time against Daniel Estrada. After beating Estrada, he could no longer make 35 and fought Ricky Burns and uh, outclassed Ricky Burns. You know, remember, Burns was holding on. Uh, he was nearly disqualified for holding, if you guys remember that fight. Uh, absolutely outclassed a really good fighter at a catchweight. Uh, and then he destroyed Antonio DeMarco. Um, another good name. You know what I'm saying? So he's got, and he's still really young. He's 24 at this point, maybe 25. And then he beat, uh, he took a year and a half off and fought Guerrero. Uh, again, battling personal demons, things coming up. And then... Now he's fighting John Molina. You know what I'm saying? Like, these last five years have gone by so quick. And, you know, if you look at it, and he hasn't gotten much done. You know, he, he's got names on his resume. His resume is not terrible. He's a world title. He's, he's a former world champ. Uh, he's got names like DeMarco and, and Ricky Burns and Abner Cotto and Daniel Estrada. Uh, so he's got names. Um, and the talent is there, and we can see that the pa that power carried up to 147 as he was able to absolutely destroy Robert the Ghost Guerrero when no one else was able to do that. No one else was able to stop him, not even close. And, and when you look at what Guerrero does, it, it shows you the talent that is there because it is all there. His, his mauling style, his seek and destroy style. Could you imagine if he can get back to that level, just where he was against the Ghost? There's another major player at 140 or 147. This fight's at 145. Uh, it was supposed to be at 147, then it was supposed to be at 140, and they're agreeing at 145. That came in late. Uh, I think that was agreed upon like yesterday or Thursday, I think. I mean, that, that came in late. Um, so, we'll see. Um, if Guerrero can get back, it means a couple of things. We have another, another world-class world champion status level at 147. And someone's going to have to fight him. Whether it's Spence, whether it's Porter, whether it's Thurman. Someone's going to have to get into the fight with him because he's got a big fan base. And, if you, and this fight is going to showcase that. This fight with uh, John Molina is going to be an all action. I mean, you're gonna everyone's going to love this fight and he's going to look sensational in it. It's tailor made for him. The matchmaking is perfect, and he's going to get a great knockout. And he's going to look great, and everyone's going to want to see him again. That is bad news for Keith Thurman. That is bad news for Sean Porter. That's bad news for Errol Spence. Um, I, I'm not going to make a prediction. Because if he's on, if, if if Figueroa is back, if he is who we think he is, I'm not picking him to beat any of those guys. I'm also not picking any of those guys to beat him. But we need to get him there. There needs to be a plan for him. Okay, John Mullen is a good first win. He'll get that. That doesn't mean he's ready for Spencer Crawford. Where do we go from there? I, I think there's a couple of names. I'd like to see him fight Danny Garcia. I think that would be a good fight. I'd like to see him fight Andre Berto. I think that would be a good fight. You know, Devin Alexander, if that guy still wants to fight. But the fight I'd really like to see is either Danny Garcia or Keith Thurman. Um, I don't think Keith Thurman would dare fight him. Although Danny Garcia may have to. I think that's a fight that could get made. Um, I'd like to see Porter fight him. But I, I think Danny Garcia or Keith Thurman would be realistic. I think either of those guys could beat him. I mean, could fight him, could face him, thinking they could beat him. And I don't know that they can. You know what I'm saying? If you think about what Jose Cito Lopez did, and, and, and Omar Figueroa is a super, supercharged Jose Cito Lopez with way more power and way more skill. Um... And he and Jose Cito Lopez, who's not a puncher, 
was able to almost knock Thurman out cold. Think about what a guy like Figueroa would, would do. Figueroa would maul him to death. That is a terrible fight for cute Thurman. You know, Keith Thurman may not be the puncher that he was hyped to be. You know, he's hyper-athletic, he's got great legs, he, he, he throws big punches, but against world-class opposition, maybe he, he, you know what I'm saying, he, he can't. He has to stay on his feet, has to stay on his back feet, and he can't really knock people out or, or hurt people like we, like we think he can. I, I think uh, Figueroa would be the bigger puncher in that fight. That's if he goes to 47. If he goes back down to 40, there's not a whole lot on the... Uh, side uh, of uh, the PBC side. There's not PBC is not loaded at 140. So you'd have to kind of cross prom promote. Um, again, he's from Texas. There's a lot of 140 pounders from Texas. Uh, it would make an interesting fight. Virgil Ortiz would be a lot of fun. Murray's hooker would be a lot of fun. Uh, Mario Barrios would be a lot of fun. I, I don't think they would. And those guys live with a couple hours apart from each other. That would be a lot of fun. I don't think they'd make those fights. I don't think they'd, they'd put Barrios in with Guerrero just yet. But, I mean, those fights would, would be fun. Um, Roy Jones Jr. has a San Antonio 140-pounder named Kendo Castaneda, who is also an offensive juggernaut. I mean, really good offensive fighter. That would be a fun fight. So there's a ton of guys just in the state of Texas for Omar Figueroa to fight if he goes back down to 40. Or he could just fight 144 catchweight to fight Adrian Broner, which was supposed to be made. I don't remember what that was supposed to be made at. Um, but, you know, that would be a fun fight. Um, I, he, I think he beats Broner, but that was supposed to happen last year. Um, let's make it happen this year. So th those are a lot of names. I, I, I think... Um, you know, 140 is going to be tough for him. There's just not a lot of names on the PBC side at 140. But I, I think realistically, if it all goes well and he knocks out John Molina like we were expecting him to, I think Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman, Adrian Barona, and Andre Berto should be four names that are mentioned for his next opponent. Um, and again, let's see how this fight goes. Let's see how it unfolds. And we'll make a decision from there. But I, I'm thinking um, Guerrero's got the fan base and the skill set to be a, a big draw and a major player. Um, but he needs to stay active and he needs to keep himself out of trouble. So, I mean, let's pray for Omar Figueroa. He's, you know, obviously has some problems. He, you know, he's never had any problems in the ring. He's only had problems out of the ring. I mean, this is a guy in a couple of years. He had a 45 amateur career, right? So he didn't care for the amateur ranks. Had a really good amateur career, but it was really brief, 40 fights. Uh, and then went from, you know, pretty much an unknown to blue chip prospect to world champ in a couple of years, right? So he went from this really light amateur background to world champ in a few years. And I, and then in a few years since then, he's fell off the face of the earth. So it's a really interesting case study. Uh, he turned pro in 2008 after just 40 amateur fights. And by 2013, he was a world champ. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 the talent and the skill is there. He, you can see it in Brandon Figueroa. You can see it in his brother. This is a fighting family, and they, and they know what they're doing. Um, they can they, they can be simultaneous world champs. They really can. Um, I, I really want the best for these kids. Um, they represent taxes. They, they represent it well. They, they're fighters. They don't duck or dodge anyone. If, Guerrero, if Figueroa gets back, and it's the Figaro that fought the Ghost. He's going to be a problem. I'm telling you guys right now. I don't know if it's going to be at 40 or 47, but he's going to be a problem. You can see he carries his power. Um, he, he's got a high punch output. He mauls people to death. But he, he, he's, his boxing skill is really good. Uh, he's really underrated. He throws sharp, short punches. Throws real good combination. Obviously, he's a real good body puncher. Uh, he's just going to be really, really tough. Um, it's not a fight anyone wants. A, a fight with Sean Porter would be so much fun. You'd, you'd want, I mean, it'd be like a dog fight. These guys would just mull each other. Um, but we'll, let's see. You guys know how I feel on, on Figueroa. Um, it's a name we haven't heard much of. I think he's a great fighter. I really do. Um, I think he's going to make problems for anyone. Let me know what y'all think on, on Figueroa. Um, and then leave your comments after the fight as well. I, I want to hear that. For Friday Check Hook, this is 3D Boxing from Texas to the world. Say goodnight and God bless. 
Enjoy 3D boxing vlog videos? Show us some love by clicking the like button. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3dboxingvlog.com is also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.